Melissa Dorian, a 23-year-old Instagram model from Los Angeles, California, traveled to Byron Bay, New South Wales, Australia as part of her holiday. Her 42-year-old boyfriend, Tim Clark, is beside her. Byron Bay, a charming coastal community, its gorgeous beaches, crystal clear waters, and diverse marine life mesmerized tourists. However, beneath its alluring beauty lurked a hidden danger. Byron Bay was notorious for its population of great white sharks. Always seeking adventure, the couple embraced the thrill and booked a cage diving experience. Tim understood the risks involved, being the older and more cautious, but Melissa's eagerness persuaded him to join her, so they made the necessary arrangements and set off for their daring endeavor. During the first two days in Byron Bay, the couple immersed themselves in the coastal town's lively atmosphere. They shopped, enjoyed the parties, and relished the attention Melissa garnered from the partygoers. The air was filled with excitement as alcohol flowed freely, and some individuals indulged in party drugs to elevate their experience. A reckless young woman, Melissa joined the locals and tourists in a drinking marathon. Aware of his responsibility, Tim consumed only a few bottles to ensure he remained sober enough to care for Melissa. However, as the night progressed, Melissa's intoxication grew more pronounced, leading to spontaneous and impulsive behavior. Feeling the effects of alcohol, Melissa suddenly had an urge to relieve herself. In her drunken mischief, she decided to forego the conventional restroom and instead venture into the ocean to urinate. Calling upon Tim for assistance, she enticed him to join her for a dip in the cold waters, driven by the desire for thrill and spontaneity. Unaware of Melissa's true intentions, Tim agreed, hoping to escape the chaotic party scene. The couple headed toward the beach where Melissa impulsively shed her clothes, leaving only her underwear and sprinted towards the ocean. Tim watched in awe, captivated by the sight of his beautiful sexy girlfriend running toward the water's edge. As Melissa dipped herself into the chilly ocean water, she felt relief sweep over her. The coldness washed away the effects of her intoxication, making her feel more alert. Without Tim knowing, she decided to swim a bit farther from the shore to achieve what she had planned from the start. But then things took a frightening twist. A sudden, severe ache that seemed as if it were on fire rushed through Melissa's leg. A powerful and unrelenting force started pulling at her at the same time and wouldn't let go. Distress and fear took the place of the tranquility she had experienced in the water. As she struggled against the sudden anguish and difficulty that engulfed her, Melissa's world was torn apart by intolerable suffering. As an unidentified force viciously dragged her downward, it tightened its hold on her leg. Her anguished cries echoed across the open waters, blending with the crashing waves. Panic seized her, and she frantically flailed her arms in a desperate attempt to break free from whatever monstrous hold had taken her. At first, Tim watched with a mixture of curiosity and amusement, thinking Melissa was playfully embracing the excitement of the ocean. But as the seconds ticked by, he noticed something was amiss. Her screams became more intense, her movements more erratic, and her distress unmistakable. A gnawing worry crept into his heart, and he realized that this was no mere playful act. Something was seriously wrong. Driven by instinct, Tim rushed towards Melissa, who had become frantic and overwhelmed by the pain. As he reached her side, the horrifying truth struck him. The source of her suffering was a shark attack. Without hesitation, Tim sprang into action, desperately grasping Melissa's body and attempting to pull her away from the water, closer to the safety of the shore. Unfortunately, the great white shark, though a juvenile, had no intention of relenting. Its rows of sharp, saw-like teeth mercilessly sank its jaws into Melissa's defenseless body, penetrating deep into her delicate flesh. The creature's powerful bite tore through her skin, ripping apart muscle tissue and ruthlessly grinding against her bones. Melissa's pain was indescribable, as each bite brought a surge of agony that coursed through her entire being. She could feel the relentless force of the predator's jaws clamping down on her, its razor-sharp teeth leaving a devastating trail of destruction in their wake. Every instinct within her screamed for escape, but she was trapped within the grasp of this merciless hunter. Tim kicked and punched at the frenzied predator in a desperate attempt to rescue Melissa, but his efforts were in vain. In a sickening sight that pierced Tim's heart, the shark seized a bite of flesh from Melissa's leg, devouring it as it separated from her body. Agonizing pain overwhelmed Melissa, causing her to lose consciousness. Driven by instinct and love, Tim pulled her out of the water and onto the beach. 
his adrenaline fueling his strength. As Melissa finally reached the safety of the shore, the full extent of her injuries became painfully evident to Tim. A large portion of her leg was gruesomely torn away, a stark reminder of the ferociousness of the shark's attack. The wound was a gaping, nightmarish cavity, and blood flowed from it relentlessly, mixing with the surrounding salt water to create a chilling horror scene. Melissa's torn flesh dangled limply from her leg, a grotesque sight that sent shivers down Tim's spine. Once hidden beneath the protective layers of skin and muscle, her bones now lay partially exposed, a harrowing testament to the brutal force of the shark's bite. The severity of the attack was undeniable, leaving little hope for a quick or painless recovery. The commotion drew the attention of fellow party-goers and beach-goers, who swiftly called for an ambulance. Moments later, paramedics arrived and swiftly whisked Melissa away to the hospital where doctors fought relentlessly to save her life. Fortunately, she survived the ordeal, but the severity of her injuries necessitated the amputation of her leg. The harrowing shark attack in Byron Bay would forever alter Melissa's life. The thrill-seeking adventure became a nightmare, reminding everyone of the dangers beneath the ocean's surface. Lola Smith had a deep affection for the sea. She has had a lifelong desire to dive beneath the surface and see the vibrant fish and coral reefs. She had a similar fascination with sharks and a desire to understand more about them. She studied these incredible species through books, documentaries and other media and admired their grace and strength. That's why she was so excited when she got to go on a vacation to Ambergris Cay in Belize, one of the best places to snorkel and dive in the world. She had saved up for months to afford the trip and couldn't wait to see the Belize Barrier Reef, the world's second largest coral reef system. She arrived at the island on a sunny morning and checked into her hotel. She unpacked her suitcase and put on her swimsuit, eager to hit the beach. She grabbed her snorkel gear and a towel and left her room. She walked along the white sand, admiring the turquoise water and the palm trees. She saw a sign that said Shark Ray Alley and followed it to a small dock where a boat awaited. She paid the fee and climbed aboard, joining a group of other tourists also going on a snorkeling tour. The boat took them to a spot where nurse sharks and stingrays often gather, attracted by the fish scraps the fishermen threw. Lola put on her mask and snorkel and jumped into the water. She was amazed by the sight of dozens of sharks and rays swimming around her, some coming close enough to touch. She felt a thrill of fear and awe as she watched them glide by, their eyes staring at her curiously. She snapped some pictures with her waterproof camera and smiled. This was the best day ever, she thought. She swam around for a while, enjoying the experience. She didn't notice that she had drifted away from the boat and the other tourists, and that the water was getting deeper and darker. She also didn't see the shadow that was following her from below and the sudden change in the behavior of the fish around her. They started to scatter and dart away, sensing something was wrong. Lola felt a violent jerk on her right leg and let out a piercing scream. She looked down and saw a massive mouth full of razor-sharp teeth clamped around her calf, blood spurting from the wound. Lola could see the shark's cold black eyes staring at her and its gills moving as it breathed. She horrifiedly realized it was a bull shark, one of the most aggressive and dangerous sharks in the world, known for its unpredictable attacks on humans. Desperate, she tried to kick and move frantically to get the creature's deadly maw off her leg. But her struggles only made the predator angrier and it clamped down harder, causing her bones to grind under the strong pressure. The pain was so intense that she felt like she was on the edge of unbearable suffering. The creature's sharp teeth continued sinking deeper into her vulnerable limb, causing an intense and unbearable pain she had never felt before. The torment spread throughout her body, leaving her defenseless against the relentless attack. No matter how hard she fought, the creature didn't let go, and it kept gnawing and tearing at her tender skin. She could barely comprehend the horrifying sight of her bone exposed and covered in blood. The attack made her feel completely helpless, like a powerless victim caught by a terrifying predator. Despite the unbearable pain, she screamed again, hoping desperately that someone would hear and rescue her. Lola was struggling in the water and feeling much pain and fear. The salty sea hurt her wounds even more, and she couldn't swim well because of the pain. Her blood mixed with the water around her, making it look red and scary. She could taste the blood on her lips, which reminded her of the shark that attacked her. As she looked up, desperately hoping for rescue, 
she noticed some bubbles forming on the water's surface. Her prayers seemed to be answered when a passing tourist named Daniel Cobb saw her predicament. He jumped into the water without thinking and jumped in to aid. He held a knife in his hand, showing no wavering in his resolve to save her. Daniel swam toward the shark's approaching threat with fearless resolution, ready to face it head on and drive it away. As he prepared to defend the woman who was in the shark's lethal grasp, his adrenaline spiked. Daniel aimed for the shark's eye and stabbed it with his knife. The shark reacted with pain and moved around a lot, but Daniel didn't give up. He kept stabbing the shark, trying to save Lola. The water turned chaotic with blood and splashing. The shark let go of Lola briefly, but its relentless nature and instinct drove it to attack again. In response to the shark's frenzied attack, Daniel kept stabbing the shark until it finally let go of Lola's severely mangled leg. The water surrounding the attack turned a sickly shade of red now that Lola's wounds were exposed to the sea. Daniel's adrenaline kicked in after the harrowing ordeal in the water, and he acted swiftly to save Lola. With a surge of strength, he urgently pulled Lola out of the pool of blood and water, carefully cradling her limp body in his arms as he swam toward the safety of the shore. As the other tourists on the boat witnessed the shocking scene, their gasps of horror echoed in the air. Without hesitation, they rushed to assist Daniel and Lola. Together, they gently lifted Lola onto the boat, handling her injured leg with extreme care. With a makeshift tourniquet applied to her wounded limb, they desperately called for an ambulance, hoping for swift medical aid. Lola was immediately whisked to the nearest hospital when the ambulance arrived. Despite the gruesome injuries inflicted by the shark and her leg being amputated, Lola recovered after several surgeries and operations. Alicia Webster was a happy and adventurous seven-year-old girl who loved the ocean. She was on a family vacation in New Zealand with her parents, siblings and grandparents. They were sailing on a yacht, enjoying their time on the open water. As they arrived at the island of Malakula, they were disappointed to find the weather cloudy and the island gloomy. Despite the weather, they decided to have lunch on the beach. However, a teacher named Lepin Tillerson approached them and warned them about the presence of sharks in the area. He advised them not to let Alicia swim in the ocean as it was known to be a popular spot for sharks. Lepin explained that fishing boats often stopped in that area, attracting sharks looking for an easy meal. He always kept his kids away from the water and advised the family to seek out adjacent freshwater areas that were safer. The family decided to take Alicia away from the shore and have lunch inland out of concern for her safety. After eating, the family ignored Lepin's advice and went back to the sea. They thought he was making things up. They observed neighborhood kids playing carefree in the water. Alicia's parents, Grant and Cherie, watched their daughter happily paddling in the shallow. She suddenly announced that she needed to pee and her parents reassured her that it was okay to do so in the ocean. The parents briefly shifted their attention to some local children who seemed scared and were leaving the water. When they looked back at Alicia, she had disappeared. Panic set in as they realized their daughter was nowhere to be seen. Suddenly, she burst through the water, screaming in agony. Grant sprang into action without hesitation, rushing towards his daughter with all his might. He swiftly lifted Alicia from the water and gently placed her on the sandy shore. Blood was pouring from her leg, indicating a shark had attacked her. Since her parents hadn't seen the shark grabbing her, they couldn't provide specific details about the attack. But at that moment, all that mattered was doing everything they could to save Alicia's life. Her left leg had been completely severed at the thigh, and she had multiple bite wounds on her left side. The beach was now stained with her blood, and everyone was in a state of panic. Grant and Cherie desperately tried to stop the bleeding as Alicia grew weaker by the second. Time was running out. Grant picked up his daughter and Cherie used a dinghy from their yacht to transport Alicia back to the mainland. They managed to flag down a passing truck and begged the driver to rush them to the nearest hospital, 30 minutes away. Sadly, upon arriving at the hospital, Alicia was pronounced dead. Her family was devastated and blamed themselves for not heeding Le Pen's warnings about the dangers lurking beneath the waves. The locals were heartbroken by the tragedy and attempted to identify the responsible shark. However, it remained a mystery since no one had witnessed the attack except Alicia. In the days following the incident, local canoeists reported sightings of a giant tiger shark patrolling the waters where Alicia was attacked. Many believed this shark to be responsible, 
although there had also been a sighting of a great white shark two days prior. The exact species would never be known. A debate arose concerning a theory relevant to this case. Some wondered if sharks were attracted to human urine and if that could have been a cause for the attack. Sharks are attracted to the sight and smell of blood, but urine does not serve as a reliable injury indicator. However, sharks have a highly developed sense of smell and can detect all bodily fluids in the water. It is speculated that by urinating in the ocean, the shark may have noticed Alicia and decided to explore after learning about her existence. There have been reports of other swimmers experiencing a shark pass beneath them without getting hurt. This begs the question of why the shark chose to attack Alicia in particular since she was nearer to the shoreline, where it would be less successful in hunting. Alicia's experience serves as a horrific reminder of the uncertainty surrounding shark behavior, notwithstanding the lack of scientific support for these claims. It is a cautionary tale that urges people to be aware of the potential risks and consider their actions consequences even in seemingly safe waters.